of all, welcome back and thanks everyone for being here. I know that uh, we're just coming back from a holiday and then a lot of people were probably busy with a variety of things. So uh, we of course appreciate your time as always and we uh, look forward to the opportunity to dig deeper into a couple topics tonight. Um, as you guys know, I'm Katie. I've been with you for the last couple of sessions and we've got a new face today. This is Brittany Ames, uh, who's another part of the Generation Schools Network team um, and helps to specialize in, in, in advisory and advocacy topics as well. Um, so we've been, um, it's our first time in Cincinnati also, so we've been doing a little bit of exploring this weekend, which has been fun. Yeah. Um, so I just wanted uh, to take a minute for Brittany to introduce herself as well. So um, as she said, my name is Brittany Ames. I um, was actually a teacher in Chicago for the last couple of years and have just recently moved to Denver with the Generation Schools Network group. And I started out, the reason I got connected with them is I was actually a community advocate. So when I first moved to Denver, I was looking for ways to get connected and they allow um, volunteers to come into the, the advocacy classes and adopt an advocacy class. So I was doing that at our um, campus in Denver at the West Generation Academy. And so that's how I got connected with Generation Schools. And basically from there, I've started working with them a lot more on doing health and wellness stuff, specifically around community partners, as well as the advocacy side as well. So. Well, that's pretty much me. Okay. Great. Um, and before you ask any questions, yes, my hair is green, and yes, yes. Brittany's hair is purple. And, that, no, <laughs> and no, it is not a requirement of our organization to have colored hair. It's just a coincidence. It just happens to be like that. Uh, but we, were, we did walkthroughs today at Cincinnati Generation Academy, and all the kids thought we were sisters, and all the kids thought our hair was beautiful, and it was, it was a big ordeal this morning. <laughs> so that's something we've been dealing with. <laughs> Um, so just wanted to take a second as well to go over uh, what we're going to be talking about today. Um, we're going to talk about the learning objectives. We're going to replicate the greeting and sharing that we've been talking about throughout um, our trainings. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be doing two different main topics today, cross-cultural understanding and helping students set and attain goals, both of which can be key aspects of your advisory classes. So uh, those are the two topics we're addressing today. And then, of course, as usual, we'll do questions, reflection, um, and evaluation at the end. So we know that um, in dealing with race, especially right now, there's a lot going on. And it's a touchy subject for some people. Some people are more willing to share on it. We don't want to make anybody uncomfortable. If it's something that makes you uncomfortable, you can feel free to leave the room. But we just ask that you come back because we will be doing other things as well. Um, so we want everybody to feel safe, though, and not feel like they have to share something on something that they don't wish to. Um, so today, your um, learning objectives, which I like to keep posted so that you can refer back to them throughout and not just have them on one slide, so they're over there to the left too. Um, utilizing strategies that empower students to set and attain goals. E reflecting on your own observations, experiences, and feelings about race, identity, and culture. So we're going to do some activities that might touch on your personal um, feelings and, and experiences on the topic as well as how to address it with students. And then the third one is to implement cr classroom strategies to help build cross-cultural understanding. So we're going to be looking at it both from teacher perspective and from student perspective, which I think will be helpful. Um, we've talked about the agreements at every point. Um, we've, we've, been, we've been through this. So we want to make sure that we're present. Um, that if we need to make a text or a call or whatever, you guys can just feel free to step outside like we usually do. Um, that's fine and that we're paying attention to the task at hand so that we can sort of all be present in the same moment, which I think is helpful. And then also we've talked a lot about asking questions. So if at any point you want to um, stop and interrupt, ask something, those are the two sort of agreements that we've been uh, following in our session so far. Does anybody have something to add for this one? Particularly in thinking that we're talking about race and other potentially sensitive <laughs> subjects. Be respectful. Yeah. Okay. Certainly be respectful and make sure we're not attacking. I, a lot of, I mean, I'm sure you guys, um, as adults or as teachers have heard it, it said, attack the issue, not the person. Um, so we want to make sure that we're trying to follow that norm as well as we go about today. So that's a really good one. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Okay. Do you want to? Greeting? Yeah. So we're going to kind of start off with just a quick greeting, kind of break the ice a little bit. So um, just so that you guys can like introduce yourself, you're just going to get up for a second and join me in the middle of the room right here. And we're just going to do a quick 
quick, just quick name thing. Nothing we too crazy. Oh, well, should we okay. go back here? Yeah, let's go back here. So we know we like to start um, all of our advisory activities with a greeting. Um, can anybody remember some of the expectations that we've gone over in the past couple of times? No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So we want to make sure the per yeah, go ahead. Eye contact. Mm -hmm. Making eye contact is a big one. Trying to use the person's name. And using the person's name. So we want to make sure the point of the greeting is that everybody feels welcome and that they're they have a name and that they have the attention for a part of the time of the day. So usually I find that with my advocacy class, they really like to come up with nicknames for each other. Um, specifically because of my purple hair, I have a little boy in my class, Josiah, who always um, start singing "Girl on the uh, Alicia Keys Girl on Fire" song. <laughs> this girl is on fire as soon as I walk in, so he called me "Girl on Fire," um, which you know where <laughs> some people might not be okay with, but I don't mind because he does it in a respectful way. So we're gonna start off by just introducing our name, and then so my name is Brittany Joy Ames, and but the people call me "Girl on Fire," and so and you guys would respond by saying "Hi, Girl on Fire." Hi, Hi Girl on Fire. So now you. Why do I? Sure. <laughs> um, I'm Sarah Abel. And, and um, a nickname that I had growing up was Ruru, just what my grandpa called me. Oh, hi, hi Ruru. Ruru. <laughs> um, I'm Jean, and my birth was Nesky, I guess. Nesky? Yeah. Nesky. Oh, my husband's name. Mm -hmm. um, and I just didn't have a name growing up. They called me Jean, so you can call me Jean. <laughs> hi, hi, Jean. Jean. That's, that's good because it's shorter than the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Tammy. Um, let me see a nice one. I, I'm, the, I'm the only girl, so <laughs> having all brothers, you can imagine. But my grandmother called me Peaches. Oh, hi, hi Peaches. Peaches. I like that. <laughs> so I'm going to cheat. My name is Nicholas Shaver. Oh. My name is Nick. Hi, okay. hi, hi Nick. Nick. Um, my name is Katie Peaton. Um, most of my friends actually just started calling me KP, which I, I like a lot. So people are really excited, and they're always like, KP, what's going on? I like that. So, hi, KP. Hi, KP. <laughs> okay, so um, again, another good version of a greeting because it lets people, like we did last time, it lets you, you share not only your name, but it also uh, another aspect of who you are and, and what you like about yourself and shares your personality, which I think is important. Yeah. So, you want to move on to sharing? Yeah, I okay. think so. Um, why don't we sit back down for sharing? Because so, we're gonna, yeah. Sorry, we're kind of yeah. cutting out some things as we got a late start. So yeah, yeah. Apologize for jumping around a little bit. The the extension of that activity was to do, um, you know, if you're imagining a big group of middle schoolers, you could do a um, the name race and have one of the kids volunteer to see how fast they can say everybody's name. Um, mm -hmm. You could issue it. That that was gonna be the next activity. It was a timer yeah. and to you know race around the room and see who could say everybody's name. But uh, since we're short on time and short on people, we're just going to move forward. Um, so moving forward with sharing, which of course should come after the greeting in our advisory periods, um, we want to just talk about re uh, reflecting from session two. And if there's anything that you've incorporated from session two in your advisories since the last time we talked, um, I saw it was about a month ago now, um, three weeks. So we're thinking about if we have been trying any team building activities or mindfulness practices in our advisories and how that is going um, and if there are any challenges associated with that. So our last two topics were team building and mindfulness. Um, can anybody share something that they might have tried and if it completely sunk and it didn't go well at all, that'd be great or that'd be good because we can learn from that. Um, and if it went really well, that's, that's great for us to celebrate as well. I did not do any mindfulness stuff. Mm -hmm. But I did do the softball one, the name softball. Okay. You go around these things. Was it imaginary? With imaginary. the fake ball. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and I did it two days. The first day I did it, I was trying to you know, crawl everyone, you know, 20 people or whatever. And there was like three students who were just kind of struggling with it and just really weren't getting together. So I just like called it off, we stopped it. And then the next time I tried it, which was the next week, I was like, well, this is going to be an optional, because the philosophers really were upset because they really wanted to play, so I was like, this is an optional thing. And so three students went to the side, and then like the 17 of us had a great game. So it's good. Worked out about that. So we were able to tweak it, it sounds like, from yeah. the second day, which is good. Yeah. Good. Okay, cool. I did the, was it the minefield? Mm -hmm. The one where they had to go for uh, the... Oh, like the maze? Yeah, the maze. Yeah. Um, 
I had one student. I mean, the kids loved it, but because they're talky, they talk, they're really talkative, um, they could not get the, they could not stick with the noises that they came up with. And then, of course, one student, he got really, really mad because he takes everything very, very seriously if he doesn't get it correct the first time. Huh. And he wanted to argue. Great. Well, we um, had an opportunity to do elbow tag. You guys know that game. It's um, we like it because you can have different size groups, but no one is ever out. And you link elbows. You guys know this. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. You link elbows with someone, and one person runs and the other person chases. But when they're tired of running, they link on to someone else, and then the other linked person. You kind of have to. We do like a little slow mo so they can see how it goes. And um, it was, I think it, it went well. I think one of the things that we do at the end is we kind of process, and the kids had some great things that they were like, well, you know, some kids ran a whole bunch and some kids get, didn't get a chance. And they were offering different ideas about, you know, how to make sure to include everybody. And that um, during the game, we noticed that sometimes, you know, there's that one kid that keeps like, trying to catch up and, tag, but then the other one keeps switching off, so with a new, fresh person, and that sometimes they would just kind of stop each other and sub someone in so that that kid wasn't, like, <laughs> running the whole time, not catching anybody. And so they were kind of sensitive to that and able to include everyone, and we had a good processing, and it looked like in our circle, some of us, like, gravitated, like, where it was harder to run around them. So we just tried to problem solve that for the future, and it was good. It was good. It's a fun game if you haven't played it. That's good. Another game um, that we played, and it takes more strategy, um, was four on a couch. Mm -hmm. And the kids have to call names, but they all have somebody's name in their hands, so they're not themselves anymore. They're somebody else in the classroom. And so when they call their name, they have to get up and move but they don't really know who everybody is because there's somebody different on this card and it's a secret. Um, but you have to maneuver the people out of the circle and to like, get all of your team on four certain chairs. Um, and so it's like more of a strategy game, but then they're in it together and they all have to be participating because you never know if it's going to be your turn to call on somebody. Um, and so you all have to be like listening and stuff. It's, it's a good game. If you, you should look it up. It's four on a couch. Okay. Awesome. Thanks for sharing, everybody. Um, so we are going to move right into our first topic of the day, which is cross-cultural understanding. So remember that we're um, trying to not only reflect on our own observations and experiences to find out um, how we feel about racism in this topic and cross-cultural identities, but also thinking about how we're going to implement these strategies. So twofold kind of objectives for this section of the training today. Um, and I wanted to start just by having a be opening conversation. So if we could share, again, more sharing. So talking about what we journaled um, and, and spending some time to reflect on this. So if, if you, you wouldn't mind kind of identifying which of the prompts you talked about and then what you, what you addressed in your journal. I can. Just, yeah, I'll just go through them real quick. They were, what are the racial, ethnic, and cultural makeups of your advisory classrooms? How do race, ethnicity, and the cultural impact of your advisory um, classroom and school? Uh, or, sorry, how do they impact it? And then, do you have conversations about race or racism with your students? Yeah, so we're just, uh, yeah, we're just going to go with the first box today, or, or for right now, and then when we move on to goal setting, we'll talk about that. Yeah, so our, we have a diverse group um, in our uh, community. I would say that we're at like half boys, half girls. Um, I don't know what our percentage of black and white, but we have a lot of many different um, multiracial students. Mm -hmm. We have economically, we have kids who are um, struggling financially mm -hmm. and who might not have regular, like, can struggle with, like, not necessarily homeless, but, you know, like, the moving around from place to place. There's not really a home, but it's indoors, usually, but it's, like, relative to relative, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. We also have families that um, are affluent and have 
resources and um, advanced degrees and um, things beyond what I'm used to, you know, that they have these amazing uh, resources. Um, and so I would say that we have a pretty diverse group and that um, as one of the subjects I teach is social studies and so there are things we have, there's the, the one year is like the ancient civilizations and one year is American history and um, we are Montessori so we do a two year cycle and so I'm on American history and we analyze it purposefully this adolescence. So like for instance we're doing the Declaration of Independence and it says all, all men are created equal and we look at the picture of the people signing it and who who are they considering? Who is all? And then you know who do you see in this picture? Okay it's the white wealthy land. So who are the people of the time that are missing? So they say Americans, they say Africans people from Africa who have come over, people who were born there, who were from Africa, women, they go on. And so when we analyze those documents, we say, you know, is this a promise that we've lived up to? Because sometimes in history, you kind of gloss over like the bad things. You know, when you're young in history, you're like making a pilgrim hat and a turkey, and you don't like really say that you can love your country, but there's not everything is perfect. Mm -hmm. And that there have been some, you know, real things that haven't gone well, and we got to be real and talk about that, so that we can make our theme this quarter is change. So we're trying to think about change for the future. Am I not answering your question? No, no, you are. Okay. You are. So anyway, that's the way that we build it into the classroom, and so it's a conversation with current events, and that um, we talk about kind of like you were saying that when we do discussions, we don't disagree with the person, but what, with what they're saying. And there are some very different views, um, but students are good about asking more questions. And, you know, right when I think like, oh my God, did you just really say that in 2014? I think, okay, other kids will rally and say like, tell me what you mean by this. Have you considered this? Or this is how it was for me. And then that kid who said something like, oh my god, they're going to be like, jumped in the hallway. <laughs> they have a change of perspective. And that they, kids are fine with it, and they work to help educate each other. So it's a very open thing, and I think that as the teacher, I have to make sure that, you know, I'm not an expert on everything, I or anything. <laughs> and I have to just say, here are the topics, and let's be open about what it is so we can do better. Mm -hmm. We do um, seminars pretty regularly. And so we talk about how to take a topic that is disagreeable for some or agreeable for the others and have a conversation with each other that is respectful and kind, but where you're also willing to dig deep. Um, and so I think that helps create um, some community and conversations that are tough. Um, and it, puts it in like a controlled setting. Um, I think another thing that you organize that's really awesome is um, on last year and on that cycle was the partner project. Yeah. And um, she sets each kid up with somebody who is like from a different neighborhood or a different race. Um, and they have to do like three things outside of school together. And it might be go to church or go to whatever religious practice or have dinner with that family or do something in there with, you know, from their life. Um, and it's really cool for them to see how other people live, and they're usually like partners that you wouldn't suspect. Um, and it's really cool that kids get to know each other in a different way. Great. So you have enough racial diversity? How many kids are in your um, advisories? Fifty-six. We share. You share. Okay. How many in total? Like fifty-six. Oh. Okay. So, okay. so you both are with all the kids during every, no, you split them out? It, it depends. So you so kind like, of like fluid groups? It's a variety. It, okay. Like today we did a morning greeting together, all of us, because we've just been away for Thanksgiving. Right. And so we were wanting to bring them back. Right. Sometimes people get all about the shopping. <laughs> we wanted to like come back to 
you know, what was that one thing right. that you connected with a family member or something? And right. what were you grateful for? So, yeah, so sometimes it's a big group, but sometimes it's smaller groups. And, you know, and those are our kids from 9.15 in the day till 2.30. Wow. They're with us. And so we really do have the opportunity to build really strong relationships with all 50, mm -hmm. some of those kids. Mm -hmm. Um, it's it's something I'm grateful for. Yeah. Yes. Do you all two teach all the subjects? Mm -hmm. Math, theology, math. I do math and science. Language, arts, and social studies. And what seventh grade? And together oh. in one room. Oh. The wall. Does it does different? The wall. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's Montessori. It's a multi-age thing, but. Um, but other schools have done that too, that um, it's kind of a nice, you know, co-teaching thing because we had had the kids for two years mm -hmm. and the others we just met in August and then they help each other. So. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Thanks. What about you guys? What do your advisories look like? Or Well, my well, the school I'm at is the one that goes with every school. Yeah. 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 When I first came, it was more Appalachian. Oh. And then it moved to African American. And now it's moving more towards Hispanic. So the majority of um, the kids in our school are Hispanic and African American. Mm -hmm. um, it's nothing where I have, I think, three, three in my grade classes, three Caucasian. Where it used to be half and half or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the interesting thing, and I don't know if it's because these kids have known each other since kindergarten preschool, mm -hmm. is that if they don't like someone, it's not because of their race or their background. Even though there's more kids that are Hispanic coming in, and now there's kids that are coming from um, um, from like Sudan. Mm -hmm. and those villages around, but they speak French. Mm -hmm. And not, uh, they very rarely speak um, of um, the village language. Mm -hmm. They speak the normally a common language. And um, there's a couple, the one gentleman, and his mom will say he's Asian Pacific. Mm -hmm. Asian Pacific, mm -hmm. even though he's half and half. Mm -hmm. Half African American mm -hmm. and half Asian um, Pacific. But um, that's what's listed on his name. Mm -hmm. um, when they went uh, to pick out their avatars, uh, that was the real, the only real discussion that we had about race. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at the avatars, all the hair is basically the same, it's just a different color and it's just a different shape. And one of the gentlemen that's in my um, class. His parents are from Africa, mm -hmm. and he's very dark. But he's like, this is as dark as they get. I said, yeah, I'm sorry, as dark as they get. Mm -hmm. So you know, he's like, hmm. But you could tell it's like, is this just as dark? You know, he felt a little bit let down. And um, another student, she explained, well, it's just like an uh, Avatar the movie. You know, they're blue, we're not blue if we pick them or something like that. So she sort of talked them down and not made me feel so bad about it. But they really don't. I mean, even with everything that's going on, uh, they really haven't brought up, it, which is really strange because normally they would. Mm -hmm. Just for uh, just on the avatar thing. The ones that are the CPS, they're just like there's like only a few, but you can go to that link. And most of my people are like dogs and birds and stuff like that. So I'm just saying, like, if there might be more possibilities if you if you did the link to it, because um, at first that was my complaint, like, whoa, this is not going to look like most of the kids in my class. So maybe try that for your time. And these are what? What do you use these avatars for? They are on our uh, their tablets. And then they have the avatar that talks to them and oh, stuff okay. like that. The district initiative yeah. book was oh, okay. like, all these different websites. Oh, so it's yeah. Like home page, yeah. and then okay. like this really scary, like, avatar is like, oh, <laughs> 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 And it, does it, I think it might, it reminds them of like homework assignments, or that might be part of its 
future functions? I think it's in progress, okay. but it's, yeah. it's, it's like plays from the district. Okay. We got a strict license. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All these things to as part of our lives. We forget them all. Okay. 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 Cool. Great. Well, thanks so much for sharing. Oh, no, to talk a little about what your evaluation looks like. Yeah. We have you know, 20 students. Uh, our school would grow is most of the way up there. They're probably like five or six. We have white students in the eighth grade. One is man kid, one kid from. Um, mm -hmm. And so they're all mostly low income, single family households. And we have a lot of dollars in the house. I don't know. Hmm. I'm not opposed to it, but, but <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> okay. What's your subject area? Yeah. Well, it's one of those things, like I said, most of these kids have been together since preschool and kindergarten. So they so so are so each other. Yeah. Yeah. So our time, because we pull from five area schools, they're from every neighborhood. Most of them don't see each other when they're not at school because they're from like. All our kids see each other. They even send me, hey, Miss Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Across the store. I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> um. Awesome. So thanks so much for sharing what your advisories look like. And I think um, Nick actually brought up the perfect segue for what our next activity is. Um, and like how to help students talk about it, how to facilitate the conversation. And like most things we've talked about in our trainings, this is something that would take quite a while um, to set the tone for and to dig deep with. Um, so we're going to start by watching a trailer for this movie called I'm Not Racist, Am I? Have we heard of this? Okay. So this um, it actually started, and it'll tell us a little bit about this, but it follows the story of 12 students who study race for a year as part of one of their uh, courses. Um, and then the movie has actually just come out, uh, but and you have to like uh, schedule a private showing through the, the group that like facilitated this. Uh, so we're going to start with the trailer um, and just sort of think about how that might help us to frame and impact our conversations. Is this something you would show, Ken? The trailer? Um, it's no. the movie. Oh. So I would say I have not seen it yet, but it's been talked a lot about uh, in the um, NPR in Colorado. It's been talked about all yeah. a ton. And um, I would say it's a little intense. I don't know that I would necessarily show the whole thing to middle schoolers. I Maybe your eighth graders could handle it. Again, I think it would be something that if you've had conversations about race, yeah. you could probably show it because there'd be some context and it wouldn't just be throwing this at them. But they dive into some pretty deep stuff about race in general and like asking, confronting their parents about it. Mm -hmm. And I just, so I don't know, you know. I mean, these adolescents are so right for this kind of conversation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're like trying to figure it all out with the difference between what their parents think and what they choose mm -hmm. to. Like when all being around. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, like when you hear them talking about politics and things like that, you're like, oh, yeah. you're not of that. Yeah. Like, <laughs> what did your parents think of that? But, you know, they're breaking through a little bit and mm -hmm. they want to have their own ideas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's been going on in Colorado a lot. Um, Colorado is a very interesting place. Having moved from Chicago, which was very, like everybody's from Chicago, everybody's lived in the Chicagoland area. Um, Colorado's a bunch of transplants and you have a lot of immigrants. Um, we have mostly Latino uh, immigrants and then we also have gotten a lot of Sudanese as well who've come in. And so this has been an ongoing discussion about um, the gap that's occurring. And so they ended up showing the movie to a classroom in Denver in a special showing. And then, so this is, we're going to listen to a clip mm -hmm. from that. So this is, we're now listening to like students' responses from To this. the movie. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to try, while we're listening here, I'm going to try and scroll through, through some of these pictures so that you can get images as well, but it's a public radio story, so it's just audio. I think that the the aspect that is being approached of intentional conversation um, is is where it really distills into the point in which we're going to see movement made and change made and and, and you're going to see the kids grow as kids. Um, so 
being able to facilitate the conversation as as the teacher leader of the classroom um, is the really important part of this. And it and again, it takes time. So this this one group of twelve kids was talking about this concept for an entire year, um, and then this other group of kids is responding to that. So um, it it sort of becomes then a global a global sort of discussion about the topic. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do kind of just a, a quick project. Um, it's called the Race Card Project, and you can, I don't know if you guys, are you guys familiar with the Race Card? Okay, so what they are is they are six-word sentences about race or racism. It can be kind of anything that you want, and there's actually a whole site um, where people can post their six-word sentences and then also write an explanation and put a picture with them as well. Um, but we're gonna take some time and just create our own six word sentences that we're gonna put up um, on our Padlet. So they won't be for everybody to see, but we can all at least see each other's and, and share. Um, so basically you can just, if you wanna scroll down a little, Katie, you can see the examples. Um, so I think we wanna start with, it can be with reading through the, examples here right and yeah. then so yeah so these are some of the examples so they can be as simple as you want um, you, they don't have to be six words but that's the kind of the goal is to try and use six words to describe how you feel about race racism or just general like feelings around how people you know may treat you or how you've seen other people treated in regards to race um, so these are some of the examples so that's his Six word sentence is this yesterday I was other, today I'm multiracial. So, um, and then he just gives an explanation of who he is and why that would probably apply for him. Um, so, you're, it can, it, I think one of the things that I see here is that some of them are sort of encompassing of the author's entire existence, and some of them are sort of one aspect of it. Um, is something that I'm looking at when I'm reading through these race cards. Um, but I think what we want to do is have you guys take some time looking through this website and then identifying one or two of the cards that you think is incredibly powerful and then sharing that out before we start making our own. So it's just if you go to the, the racecardproject.com, it'll pull up for you and you can kind of look through some of them and start creating your own. So as you're looking through this, see if there's like one or two that really stand out to you as interesting. And we're just going to kind of share those and then we'll create our, our own race cards. Sure. Yeah, just as you're seeing some that are really interesting, share out. Yeah. 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 Said if like me if half of me is white, then the other half must be black. Instead of identifying a whole, a whole she, she, automatically she automatically started as half and half, um, half. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which I think kind of goes, <clears throat> goes back to that. I remember I remember going to prom with my best friend who was a black and was a black man. Like giving my mom, which like my grandma, and I just remember feeling so heartbroken. And I just remember feeling so heartbroken. And then I was like, really, just my friend, but now it was just my friend, but now it doesn't matter either. Yeah, that wasn't the point. But it's something that. Mhm. Mhm. I always thought this one was interesting. That I'm glad my son is white. It's a, mm -hmm. a pretty intense statement. Um, yeah. Yeah. 
There's actually not any explanation for that one, unfortunately, either, because I feel like it's something that kind of needs a little bit more. I'd like to hear why that's, you know, from his perspective, why that is such a big deal to him. Which I think, I mean, one of my reactions to that is that he's he's putting his own label on his son. So, like, we were just saying his son would be multiracial, but he's calling his son white. And and that's how he's identifying his child. And, and, and the child might grow up and choose to identify himself in another way when he's 18. Um, or, or before that, I suppose. Um... But I think I think the concept of self-identifying is is really important to teach our kids. You know, um, it's not what the paper says. It's not what your parents may or may not say. It's what you feel like you want to identify as. Um, is usually how I approach it with my students. Sometimes, too, I think it's kind of shocking to hear, like, students' perspectives on a lot of stuff. Like, there's some stuff that I feel, you're, you're not sure that they even recognize it until you start talking to them about it, and then you're almost caught off guard by how much they've, they've noticed or how much it has bothered them, and they just don't talk about it. Um, I had, I when I taught in Chicago, I taught high school math, and uh, my school is 98% African American, and I remember one time a kid came up to me, uh, from after his English class and asked me why we kept reading all black authors and it was interesting because we like you know you un you don't I don't even think the teacher meant to do that I just think that that was like an unnatural like unconscious decision on his part to provide them with those types of books from those types of authors thinking that he was giving them some of their culture and as a result the student almost saw it as annoying that he was having to only read African-American authors so I just, and I hadn't really thought about it either until he said something. So I think it's surprising sometimes how these students, what these students pick up on. I mean, I've seen it shift I mean, I've over, seen it shift. over, over you know, 20 some years, how, how kids are friends with each other, you know, how lots of the yeah, relationships them. begin, the relationship and when we're crossing, and when we're crossing lines, lines color, of color, color. Um, or kids who are from kids who biracial are from or multiracial background, multiracial background, how things, have, how things, it's not as much of an issue. Like, like, like it used to be like, it used to be like, I used to show this thing called the family. Or if it's, I think it was interesting. Because he, he was lamenting about the thing, woman that said, what does he check? And he has, he looked at Germany, he looked at Japan, he looked at Japan, he looked at Japan. His family was from family was from Gala tribe and tribe. He just it was just, just like this whole thing. Like this whole and he and just, he kind just kind of says this just kind of his own little take. Own and little as I've shown it, like it's just like a short little like thing, a bunch of each other. But he um, <laughs> he um, you know, I used to be like how are they gonna deal with this? And it was bigger, but it wouldn't have bigger. 20 years ago, or 20 years ago, or 17. When was that terrible? When was that the day I was on the night? And my students are like, my students are like, this is what happens. 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 This is a thing like a, for our community, for at least. Our community, at least. I don't know if it's just I don't know if it's the parents and the parents ways, and the, you know, ways they've gone through or they've gone through, through this generation, of this generation, children, but it's not, children, but it's not as much as much of an issue. Like mm -hmm. the friends mm -hmm. float the friend, between the, the relationship, the boys relationship, and girls float the girls and the race of the queen pretty easily. Pretty Where easily. is it? Where was is a more like was a more like before between the four. 
No, I think it's well, still, think it's an, it's issue still an issue depending on the parent because the parent, uh, because uh, I was really shocked. I was really this teacher, shocked. This teacher that had been teaching for years and I was teaching years when I was teaching. And she and made the statement that, that she didn't believe that she didn't believe children who were mixed. Children who were mixed. I was like, huh? That's like, huh? Huh? Agree with us. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> well, it's like, well, it's like, I forget we were talking about. I forget we were talking about. We were talking about. We were talking And this was like three years later. This was like later. three years later. And I never knew this. And I never knew this. And, and, and she made a statement. She made a statement. That shows that she did. That shows that she did. 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 I did. She 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 did. We are trying. We to are trying to our beliefs and our values. Our beliefs and our values at the door. Mm -hmm. And for three years, and for three she years, had left this she had left in this thing at the door, thing at the door, with dealing with the kids. With the but kids. when it was just us but talking one on one, I was like, I was like, well, well I mean, well, it was well, I mean, a, a lot, a lot, because we had kids because we who had were kids who were and. Mixed. And unfortunately, unfortunately, that was also during that the time. That was also during the time. And I hate to say that. Um, and I hate to say that. Um, we had a lot of mixed kids. We had a lot of mixed kids. Because it was going around. That, it was going around. Mixed that. kids were pretty. Mixed kids were pretty. Uh, uh, and uh, and I mean, I'm, I mean, pretty, sure the girls I'm pretty sure the girls did think not think about. Think what was about going to go on next? Because because going on next one of the girls, her son, had girls, mirrors, her son had me. And I look, and her son comes from Derby, comes from Big Derby, comes from Derby, and her little girl, her little girl, who was all white, who comes to school nice and clean, and I'm like, what? How is this going on? How is this going on? He was what he was created. Created, or you know, he or, came up you know, he came with up that little thing. That little thing. Ooh, I'm gonna have a mixture. I'm gonna have a mixture because it's pretty. Because it's pretty. I was like, huh. I was like, do these parents even do these think parents about even what they think said? About what they and said. then of course, and then of course, parents don't agree. Parents don't agree. And then you have this whole and thing. Have this and whole I, thing. I, I still and see. I, I, still I don't see it as much. I don't see it as much. Because I really don't I get into, really don't get into the, the kids' business as much as I used to. 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 But, but there are parents that there just are don't. There are parents that just don't. They really. don't. They don't. It makes a big difference where you're from, from and where the kids and where the kids come from. And so. You know, we have some kids that are from different elementary from schools different that are schools predominantly African American, 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 so, so when I came to teach in Cincinnati, so when I came to teach in my first job was at Rosenberg at Vine Street School, and my mom was like, really worried about that. Really worried. And, and now she'll still say that I like become part of it because I've had to deal with like these other kids. And I, you know, like I, you know, like she's always lived. She's always her whole life. And you know, like you know, like it's yeah. I mean, really, it is. I mean, really, it is. So it's like. So it's like they've never been exposed to never been exposed. You know, my parents have You know, my parents And I wasn't until I wasn't college until and teaching. College and teaching. Um, but it's so that I think but about our kids that when they're coming from these neighborhoods, these neighborhoods where they live in pockets, they live in pockets uh, or like Withrow and they don't have a lot of diversity. It's, you know, their views you know, are different. Because they don't have opportunities to interact with other people and learn. People and learn. Oh, maybe it's not that different. Maybe it's or not that Or maybe they do have different feelings. They do have different feelings. Talking about, you know, talking about, you know talking if you put people in the same room, people in the same room, kind of force them to have these conversations. Have this conversation. I mean, they learn about each other. I mean, they learn about each other. And I think, to further your point as well, um, and I started. As Brittany and I were preparing for this training, I said, you know, like, Cincinnati's different from a lot of other places when, when dealing with this topic, you know? So we have these various neighborhoods. Um, we have a history, at, at, in our recent history, of pretty severe race problems. And so it's not... I think that you have to be aware of that as you're addressing these topics within Cincinnati schools. And you have to... Um, 
you have to know that you know what what we do here and the dynamic that exists here is different from other places, but we need to use that difference as a strength um, and and make sure that we're we're trying to combat that. So we're, we're in, in this way, teachers are becoming um, stewards of social change and as in addition to education, you know. Um, but but as you're saying, sometimes your values are at the door. Uh, for me as a teacher, it, it was less about race values and more about class values. Um, and this is veering off, off topic a little bit, but it was, it was middle class values that I had to leave at the door. Um, and I had to remember that, like, the things that I think are important aren't necessarily important to the kids. It doesn't mean I can't show them, but I can't push it on them. You know, same as political values, same as religious values. It's all, you, you can't push it on the kids. Um, but you can foster the conversation in a productive way, which I think is important. Um, any other race cards, I, and which brought me up to this one, which is why I, I've had this one up, is because it, it happened in Cincinnati. This guy is coming in from St. Louis, and he's talking about how he was in Cincinnati, and a woman grabbed her purse when, when he walked down the supermarket aisle, and he said, I'm an engineer at GE and a captain in the Air Force, National Guard, and I'm not going to take your purse. And, you know, and, and he, he said, I won't steal your purse, and he, he walked up and he confronted her, you know? Um, so... I, I like that little local uh, touch we here. Just were uh, we just were reading some cider. Mm-hmm. I had some, um, I had them, um, you know, that book, um, uh, the research, and the social research, and the two games. Mm-hmm. And it's and once the, once the, the west side, uh, the west side, and the other is like the dog kids, well, dog kids. Well, kids. Well, it takes well, place in Oklahoma. It takes place in Oklahoma, but it's like they're all white. Like they're the all kids, white. They bring, the kids, they, they bring, bring to it what they, they bring to it. Those kids are, whatever. Kids are. Whatever. And, whatever. So and so I have them. And so I have them. During one week, during the day. They just whisper to me the day. And they dress in something that's not their typical style. Typical style. And then they see and what kind of comments that they have. Because in the book, it's clear that the police, the police treat the police treat socias and the Greek socias and the Greeks clear that they treat each other that they treat each so other we're trying so to like trying suppose, to like suppose well is it actually well, outside, 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 outside is that does make it is that and so and some kids you know so some dress kids, up in you know, church dress clothes and some kids, kids clothes and are dressing down are they're all whatever and they trade clothes they trade clothes with the kids who are the kids and the whatever and so whatever some get pretty crazy some get pretty crazy and they and they dress and then they dress and then they are the people so that they get a true reaction a true reaction and then we have this, and then have this, you know, what groups do you see? You know, do you see? You know, are there, you know, are there in the cafeteria that are just this group? Really, they're kind of sweet. Really, they're, they're kind of usually sweet because they're usually like wherever. And wherever. <laughs> but, you know, every kid you know, comes every to it with their own thing. Our kids who think, I can't sit with the kids who play sports. And then some kid who plays sports is like, I play sports. I play sports. And then, so they talk about that. And then, so they talk about that. The whole thing with the clothes. The whole thing with the clothes. More what they're on. More what they're on. More about race. More about race. And now it's more about more teachers because because I used to look young. I used to look young when I was starting out, and I would be on and I would be on them and with them and you know the docent, you know the docent house of the art museum. Would it see me right away? See me right away? And then it's like. Like they'd be like, yeah, yeah they'd be like, like, oh, hi, I'm right here, I'm right here, I spoke with you on the phone. And I, I, and when I, I look young, young, and when I look young, I get it. But these kids, they go, these kids, they go in stores. I don't care what race they are. They're teenagers. People are looking at them like, what do you have there? What do you have there? What do you get? And they all, and they all can relate. Now I know. Now I know. Maybe beyond, maybe beyond, maybe beyond. And there's. And they're not always not always like that. that. Mm-hmm. Years past, some are going, right going right to that. Now they're like, now they're like, I don't know that man. Why are they looking at me like that? Well, Dorn has Dorn has great success today. Dorn has great success today. They're still in that. They're still in that. Where do I belong? Usually around. 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 Usually
I'm and sorry. We had. I'm sorry. We had. This table was over here. This table was over here. And, 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 and I got the table. This table. I got the table. And the. What is it? The. What is it? The. Oh, what do you call those? Oh, what do you call those? Sort of like the. Sort of like the big bang. The nerdy people. The nerdy Star Wars. The Star Wars. And all the bags. And then you had the grunge people. And then you had the nerd people over here. And it wasn't like we did It wasn't like we didn't have classes because we had classes together. But when it came to lunch, when it came to group. You are that you sit with it, that you sit with it, and you really sit with it. So that's the question. So that's the question. Is that, is that, is, is sharing an interest, sharing a head of friends who have this core interest, have, is that the same, is that the same, excluding, or just, I mean, those are the questions I mean, those are the questions that you have to get into, and I don't know all the answers, but the whole point of us doing the, the switching the clothes, or when we do the parlors, or when we do the parties, is that thing, at the root, at the root, at least, in my at least in, in my it's about opinion. it's about uh, education uh, and exposure. Education and if you've never been with someone, never been with someone, you're an only child. You've never been a child. You've never been. A you don't know that, and you don't you have a guess of what it might be. And unless you experience even just a few little things, going to temple, going to this kid's going to this kid's football, that we can't have a we can't have a dialogue unless we're educated about that. You know, that, is that what you know, is that what you know, thinking about you know, thinking about terrorism? Thinking terrorism, about thinking about my class who are Muslims, who are housing, housing see, see their see faith, their connected faith, to things in the US. US. They're like US. they're like you know you know, let's talk about what is that? Let's talk about what is that? I don't know. I don't know. It's a good conversation. It's a good conversation. And you have to have people that are not have people that are not like mine. Because I remember when I started teaching, when I started teaching, I had a girl that had seizures, seizures, and the kids were the and the kids only had to get exposed in one So, so you know, I wonder how just you know, I wonder how just had her. This is what happens when I have a seizure. When I have a seizure, if I do this, if I do this, if I do this, if I do this, uh, uh, if I have a grandma, uh, if I have a grandma, this, 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 this is what happens. This is what you have to do. And then they understand it. They understand it because a lot of things, a lot of things, they're afraid of. They're afraid of. They don't know. Mm -hmm. And yeah, mm -hmm. they go, yeah, because yeah, they go, no. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good point. Mm -hmm. And it has to extend it and not extend the race. And that and then we do a thing where we have some kids who are autistic included and included as persons. You know, beyond that, um, yeah, sexual yeah, orientation, yeah. sexual orientation pieces yeah. about that that we read and yeah. reflect on and yeah. reflect on and talk about how do we about how do we, how can we not just be tolerant, not just be tolerant, but um, be a community um, that celebrates. Yeah. Because I think tolerance, I think tolerance, tolerance, and tolerance is one step, but we're kind of, but kind of but we're kind beyond to the beyond to the celebrate. And there's people that can't and there's people that can't be beyond it. I mean, we only have them. We only have six hours out. Of our neighborhood has no. Our neighborhood has the majority, the, the majority of the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember I mean, years. Ago, I remember years ago. It, I still laugh about it. I still laugh about it because I have a problem with his parents. He says, he says, he as can be. President as can be. He does not know I'm black. He does not know I'm black. Mm -hmm. And they did not find that out. They did not find that out until I went to the house for IEP. And then of course he took his son out of school. Out of school. But oh, he's on his phone. He's on his phone. These people should go back to where they were. They 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 should go back to where because it's one of those things it's that one of those things I know people don't think. I know people don't think like and people have a right to and have people have a right to have their own opinion. And I treated his son and I treated his son the same way I treated the same way I treated all the and I showed up and I showed up and I was like a little fun. It wasn't 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 it
You hey, can't overlook. You can't money. overlook it's what those, what you two are about. It's not. I'm not going to change this person's mind. His kids saw. His that kids saw not that, that not all of us are bad. Okay. No. No. Okay. 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 I, you know, I think the more the more we continue to push kids' understanding of themselves is really important. So back to your point, Jean, when you were talking about how some teenagers get looks when they go into a store because they're teenagers. And so oftentimes kids would come to my classroom and complain about so-and-so the way they were treated on the metro or so-and-so the way they were treated by the cop. And and just just because I'm black and so-and-so is why I was treated that way. And I was like, well, let's di let's dissect what you, what you were doing. Were you were you dancing in the middle of the street and jaywalking? Yeah. Is that against the rules? Yeah. Does it matter what color you are? No. <laughs> and you know they start in, it, just starting to ask them those questions. Um, they started to say, you know, they started to get there. Um, so I think all aspects of kids' identities are um, are important, and they need to understand that they that, that they make them up. Um, that, that they that they affect all the aspects of who they are. Um, so. So if you guys want to take a few minutes and write out your own essays, um, then we can post them up to our Padlet. And I'll try and pull up our Padlet yeah. here. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank, thank you. you thank you, Nick. Um, but if you want to take a oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, you want, <laughs> thank you. If you want to take a minute um, and think about what your six-word uh, race card might be, that'd be great. Um, I know we might not all have perfect answers now, but we can start to look at it. <laughs> 